In this video, I will do model breaking application for a card moving on an inclined table in one dimension. If you're not familiar with the modeling, please uh, see this video for reference. In model breaking, we are using a particular model, in this example, the constant acceleration model, for a card moving on an inclined line. So let's open the tracker software uh, in our computer. And, uh, we have this uh, card which is going on an inclined uh, table. And I will now, uh, from my folder, drag this movie onto tracker. So it will open up and just uh, say OK for this. Uh, so what you see now, uh, a student which is releasing a card on this inclined surface going down in a real uh, lab. Okay, let's run it. Okay, so we are going to um, analyze this uh, real card, real motion of a uh, real video of a uh, uh, motion of a card moving on an inclined table in a lab. And by using this, you know, uh, model breaking method. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, uh, we have to set up our coordinate system just pressing this coordinate button in your tracker. It will show up this uh, axis, and the vertical is y, and the horizontal is uh, x. So I will drag from this origin, I will drag, put the origin on the point that uh, this inclined uh, line and the uh, parallel surface uh, crossing. So for this, I am just using my uh, wheels of the mouse to enlarge the screen and then put the uh, drag, the coordinate axis, right this point where the inclined surface and the horizontal table just crosses. Okay, so but the thing is, if you leave this coordinate system like this, the motion will be two-dimensional because as the uh, card is going down, it will change its location in both in the y-axis and the x-axis. So to make you know uh, this motion simpler for the uh, observation from the coordinate system, what we do is just we, we grab from one point in the x-axis and drag it, rotate it, so that it becomes parallel to this inclined surface. And in that case, um, the card will move only along this x-axis. Okay, So we're just making the motion uh, one-dimensional, moving only on the x-axis by just adjusting your coordinate system. So, And once you finish adjusting your coordinate system, you can just make it visible by just pressing this uh, coordinate system button again. Uh, the next thing is that uh, we have to uh, put the scale for position measurements. For this, I'm going to press uh, this uh, scale button and choose new calibration stick. Uh, so f for this, uh, the video already has set, sets up the, uh, the distance from this point to this point as 100 centimeters. So our, the only thing that we are going to do is that we mark, we're, we're going to mark these two points and we're going to state that this distance is going to be uh, one meter for tracker. So once you have chosen this calibration stick, now what we do is we hold the shift key in your keyboard and see that your mouse pointer appears to be a square sign and then bring to the first point zero and mark it by pressing just left mouse button and this is going to be your uh, uh, first mark and the second mark is going to be at this 100 centimeters again do the same by pressing shift and see the square sign and just press right over here and as soon as you just uh, mark the second point, the uh, tracker will draw this blue line and you just type one meter between these two points and enter. So this way again, uh, we just uh, select our scale 
for this specific uh, video uh, stating that the, between this point and this point it's one meter so again you make you can make uh, uh, this uh, scale line unvisible uh, by pressing this scale button over here and now we are ready uh, to you know uh, get the position measurements for the card for each frame and now we choose uh, this create button and we choose point mass okay choose point mass when you do this the tracker will uh, form a new a small window stating that mass a over there so this is nothing but you know uh, we just create a point particle uh, to measure its position at every frame okay let's rename this rename this by card okay and uh, this uh, sign is going to be uh, is seen on the uh, uh, position measurements on the card so before uh, we state tracker how to get the position measurements and times also uh, let's uh, concentrate on the card that we have to choose a reference point on the card so that the tracker will measure its position from just uh, measuring that reference point in, in, with respect to the uh, origin in our coordinate system so for this i'm just you know enlarging this card and this front uh, point I will choose as the reference point this point to uh, m make the position measurements from the car okay well <clears throat> in order to do this uh, I'm just uh, starting with the zero frame is the first frame uh, the first frame is always always the zero frame and come over here that right this point that I am choosing as my reference point on the car to measure the position uh, measurements and right over here when i come i just uh, okay before that just come over here on the card and press it and just choose auto tracker when you choose this select this one the tracker will open up a new window okay it says the new window it says the uh, auto tracker window and again i will come over here that the uh, over the point that I will choose as reference and when I come over here I will just press and hold the shift key and also the control and hold the uh, control key pressed okay now I'm pressing these two keys at the same time holding it both the shift and control you see the mouse pointer appears as circle and I'll come over the point that I will choose as reference and I just press the left mouse button and you see this uh, red circle appears as soon as you do that with the label zero and this is going to be your first starting uh, uh, measurement or the initial position of the car okay you have just done the initial measurement of the car as appeared also on this uh, pilot window the small window uh, next to this uh, video on top so we just what to, we what we, we did is we marked the first position okay and on the tracker window you see this uh, this small uh, uh, patterns over here okay what these patterns are about that uh, these patterns for every uh, frame the the tracker will look for and it will mark the center of this pattern okay and will make made the make the measurement of the position uh, for that pattern at it every frame okay well uh, the rest the tracker will do it your, your itself that i we will only press the search button and when i just press the search button the tracker will run the movie uh, frame by frame and at each frame it will measure its position from right this point that we uh, uh, chose as the reference okay but at the same time at the same time uh, you will see uh, how the x versus t graph is changing okay on a real time so let's do it okay uh, let's do it before this i will just come over here this button to choose no trail okay 
All right, so I'm ready now to run the position measurements, the automatic position measurements to be made by Tracker. So I'm just uh, pressing the search button. Okay, so you see what happens. The Tracker in each frame just uh, measures the position just from in front of the car until the last frame. Okay, the last frame is reached. Uh, it is asking whether I should ex accept this last frame uh, position measurements. I just accept and that's done. So there are 80, 82 frames, okay? What the tracker has just done now, on a very quick uh, uh, time, it measured 82 points, it, it made measured 82 position measurements on this uh, cart, okay? And these measurements that you also can see on this pilot window, okay? X versus time graph. So, you know, all our measurements are done now. You can also see these measurements in a tabular form on this uh, third window. It is the uh, uh, table uh, window. You see the time measurements and the X measurements all the way here or here. There is also Y column, uh, but the Y measurements doesn't change at all because, you know, there is no motion in the Y direction. Okay, so the next thing that we should do is just let's uh, close this window. Uh, we have to ask ourselves that, well, the tracker is uh, measuring it, the position of this card at every frame. If you run it uh, frame by frame, you see. But uh, what about the uh, uh, errors in this me uh, measurements? Okay, the tracker is measuring it, but there, sh there should be error on this measurement. Uh, no any device can make measurements without errors. Uh, so when you look at this enlarged screen, enlarged picture of this card, you can notice that these uh, uh, squares, the pixels in your picture. So these pixels are the smallest, uh, you know, visual information about the picture of the card. So you can take the uh, length of the small, smallest uh, pixels, the squares, to be your position uh, measurement error, right? The error in your posi position measurements, because you know. Every picture uh, in a in a movie or you know in in, in a video in a, in the uh, uh, computer uh, consists of these small pixels. But what we do is we we don't see them yet. Uh, we don't see uh, them when we look at the normal picture because they are too small. But when you enlarge it, you can see you can see them. You can see them that every uh, uh, picture is formed by just collection of these small squares. So it's very logical to take the length or the size of these small uh, pixels to be your position uh, error uh, done by the tracker because the pictures are formed by these pixels. All right. So, you know, for every uh, frame, these pixels are remade for each frame following this motion of the car. And the possible error is going to be one square, uh, one uh, size of this one small squares. All right. So the next thing is, okay, how can we measure the size of these each uh, squares? To do this, we have another tool. Again, we come to uh, create button, we create menu and come down on measuring tools. On the measuring tools, just select tape measure. Okay. When you select tape measure, uh, as soon as you select tape measure, you will see this uh, line uh, stating its length from uh, one end to other end uh, appearing. So you can always uh, drag the ends of this line so that uh, you can bring them to any two points that you want to measure uh, the distance. Let's do this. That Since every square, every pixels are very small, what I will do is just uh, that uh, I will, for example, start from one pixel from here and I will count, let's say, 10 of them and come to 10th and I will just uh, place these end, end points from the starting to the end of these squares and measure it. Well, measuring it, just to look at this number 
and then record them and divide this by 10 because I am just measuring the uh, length of 10 squares and if I divide this by 10 I will be able to just measure the size of one single uh, square so I am choosing uh, this one as the starting square 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and this one as the uh, end square so I'll just place the end points over here and over here um, okay let me let me count this again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so this is let's bring over here ten all right so this distance is just the uh, size of 10 squares 10 pixels and it just reads 2.145 uh, 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 to the power 10 to minus 2 uh, meters that means it is 2.145 centimeters okay so if i divide this by 10 it's going to be 0 0.21 centimeters to be the size of one square and this is going to be my delta x or the error in the position measurements made by tracker so let me write this over here let me change the screen my delta x is just 0 0.245 centimeters okay or you can write it this in terms of millimeters it is 2.145 millimeters so this is the error in the position measurements the error in the position measurements made by tracker so what about uh, time measurements right time measurements are done by just uh, you know uh, counting these frames and every frame has if you come to this movie button over here and press it you will see this some uh, frame information about this movie and it is 60 percent uh, sorry it is uh, yeah 60 frame per second and each frame has a time duration of 0 0.017 seconds or uh, 17 millisecond so uh, if this is the uh, timing for only once uh, frame then this half of this can be taken as the time uh, error in the time measurements right so i will just come uh, over here and the error in my time measurements i will record this as half of 17 or uh, let's say you know 16 half of it uh, 8 8 milliseconds means 0 0.008 seconds sorry so and this sets my error in time measurements okay okay so now i after determining the errors in measurements i'm ready to analyze the data produced by let me change the screen the data produced by this uh, tracker this is tabulated form and the visual form so i will make a model breaking now making a model breaking for a particular model first of all what is our model our model is already there the model is this the position is just a parabola in time it is x0 plus v0 times t plus one half a t square so the model is this one because it's already uh, known for model breakings the models are not um, made but they are already uh, there and what we do is just we try to uh, uh, make this model unique for our case by just determining the parameters in the parameters in this uh, constant accelerated motion in one dimension is just uh, that we have three parameters the initial position the initial velocity of the card and its constant acceleration so what 
the tracker or we, what we will do is now that we are going to determine these parameters but how are we going to do this using our data let me come to the tracker screen so this is our data what we will do is we are going to uh, determine these parameters by analyzing this let's say graph come over the graph and just uh, press uh, the right mouse button anywhere on the on the graph and just select analyze so new window will arise when you do this you will see again these uh, uh, data points but they are connected now and what we will do over here we will make a model breaking by using curve fit okay well if you select curve fit uh, the tracker uh, will give these uh, bottom uh, uh, windows uh, inner windows and you'll see this fit what we mean by curve fitting what we mean by curve fitting is that uh, we are trying to determine the analytical function that best fits to our data but when you look at this graph this data sorry it looks like a parabola right but it is parabola well it is going to be parabola anyway because uh, the model is already uh, there i said it is a constant accelerated motion and for a constant accelerated motion the position is a parabola in time so uh, we're going to choose from noun uh, analytical functions a parabola right because you know the parabola is already there. so as soon as you choose parabola over here the tracker will draw it's already draw in the color of pink over here the tracker draws the best parabola that fits your data okay and the tracker gives the parabola equation as x is equal to a t square b t plus b t plus c okay what are these uh, a b c square corresponds we know in our model these a b c's are just let me switch to white screen okay this is a and this is b and this is c in track that what the tracker sees and uh, it already determined these values okay because it fits the data and a is calculated to be this much minus 8.028 to the uh, 10 to the power minus 1 and of course this is twice the value of the uh, sorry half of the value of the acceleration from our model if you compare uh, a t square b t and c and this is nothing but a is nothing but half of the constant acceleration okay and b is there and c is there it's so all uh, uh, calculated or fitted by tracker okay so let's uh, do this and determine the uh, initial position initial velocity and the constant acceleration so when you look at uh, uh, these parameters that are determined by tracker abc uh, we just figure out that the initial position is 1.30 uh, 373 meters and the initial velocity of the car is well it looks like zero but you know uh, the tracker is uh, very delicate in calculating these kind of things so it measured to be it calculated to be 0 0.1 etc meter per second and the acceleration uh, he, it calculated to be minus 1.6 uh, zero uh, five six meter per second square why it's minus because you know in the coordinate system that we put in the coordinate uh, tracker that well, this was the coordinate system the card is moving in this direction which and you know, which over here the positive x direction is the opposite one so the, the card is moving toward the uh, origin so that's why the tracker has uh, calculated the acceleration to be minus so it's very obvious okay so we just you know uh, figured out the uh, what exactly the uh, position function of this card as a fun uh, function of time uh, to be or calculated uh, by just you know doing this curve fitting it's there well, it's done so uh, we have just analyzed the let the uh, tracker analyze the data and it found a best fit 
parabola for our data and it just calculated all the values. So are we done? Of course not, because we have to calculate the errors in our results, all right? So what is the error in the initial position? Well, the error is the measurement measured error, which is uh, 0. Uh, whatever is it there are the 2.145 millimeters well you can always write this over here as x0 let's say plus minus delta x to be uh, this is this has well if you have to convert this we have to convert this into meters it's going to be 0. Uh, uh, 0. Uh, 0.02145 meters right and uh, because I will record this x to be 1.30 uh, 373 meters plus minus 0, 0.0 well after the decimal point you have to be careful that we have only three digits in the result so the error must have the three digits after the decimal point it's going to be 0 2 and 1 and this is meters so we have to, you know, find uh, the error values. So let's stop over here first that, you know, uh, we said that, okay, uh, the tracker has this measurement errors. And it just found this model with all the parameters. Uh, how do we know that this model successfully explains the motion of our cart? Okay. So when you go back to the uh, uh, analyze window of tracker you also see this thing that the, it says root mean square deviation okay and the root mean square deviation uh, it has just a calculated number 7.759 10 to minus 4 what does that mean well what is root mean square deviation okay the root mean square deviation is a kind of measure of distance or difference of all the data points to the parabola that uh, the, uh, the tracker uh, fits as the best uh, curve to your data. Okay, so the best curve is an analytical function but you have sets of data points but these data points are some of them is going to be on just on the line and that's okay but some i'm going to run uh, some are some of them will be just off the line to a degree but it seems that all the uh, po data points looks like right on the time but it's not in fact if you you know uh, increase uh, this picture i'm not able to do this uh, you know somewhat some data points are just off the lines but how are, are uh, uh, how are this, how are we going to measure this difference well when you look at uh, you know certain data at a certain time just look at its position value whatever its position value and this position value of your real data is off the curve by how much amount how, how many uh, how many millimeters let's say uh, what the tracker does is that it calculates all of these differences and it gets the mean value of it. So the mean value of these differences of each of your position of the data to the best curve fit is this much. And this is in meters. Okay, uh, You can read this as 0 0.7759 millimeter. Okay. So the root mean square, let me record this over the white... Uh, screen the root mean square deviation in x is just 0 0.7759 millimeters okay well <coughs> how are we going to use this number to uh, justify the success of our model the success of our model with these parameter values okay well uh, the success of our model uh, is to be determined by just looking at this root mean square value and comparing this to the measurement error which is made on 
x, the position measurement value, which is 2.145 millimeters. So, this since this value calculated errors, average errors, is smaller than the measurement value, I can safely we can safely say that this model successfully explains the motion of the car because the root mean square errors for each data average root mean average errors for each data is less than the measurement uh, errors it is within the measurement errors that means the best f uh, line fit uh, sorry the best uh, parabola fit is just within the measurement error made by the tracker so the root mean square always must be less than this measurement error in that case you are safe you can safely say that your model with these parameters successfully explains or fits to your data okay this is how we justify the success of our model by just looking at the uh, this root mean square value whether it is uh, smaller than the measurement value in using the same uh, of course units millimeter and millimeter over here so since this is uh, smaller than the measure measured errors the, or measurement uh, position measurement uh, errors then uh, you are okay all right next uh, i will continue to determine the errors in these parameters and we already done the position uh, next thing is that okay Tracker has calculated the initial velocity of this value, but what about its error? Okay, well, V0 plus minus delta V. What is delta V in this result? Okay, well, Tracker calculated its initial velocity, but what is the possible error in this measure, in this result? Uh, you know, in physics, we don't only have uh, errors in measurements, but also we have errors, uh, calculated errors in our results. If there are, of course, uh, errors in our uh, measurements, there should be, there must be errors in our results. So what is delta V? How do we get this delta V information? Well, for this, uh, let me switch to this uh, tracker's uh, screen again. I will just uh, uh, close this XT analysis window, and I will open the V versus time graph. Okay, because we're not now concerning the velocity, and when you change this plot window to V versus time from X versus time, uh, V versus time will show you the how this velocity of this car is changing over time, and obviously for a constant accelerated motion, this should be a straight line, okay, with some curve, <coughs> and the curve, the sorry, with some slope, and the slope of this line of course is going to be the acceleration another way of uh, calculating the acceleration is just by looking at the slope but we have done this already uh, by using x versus t graph so what we are going to do again we come over here and uh, press the right uh, button of your mouse come to analyze and it will open up on a new window and now we will come to analyze again the curve fit now this time we are curve fitting v versus t uh, values but v values over here are not data but they are calculated but they are calculated by using the position and time uh, measurements they are calculated by tracker this can be again these points can be taken as data but it's not direct the uh, measurements but it's a uh, you know calculated data and again when we come down to this uh, root mean square deviation the, 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 what the tracker has done is just again it produced the best line for this for this data uh, you know it calculated the uh, a and b parameters again and a parameter is just uh, you know this uh, slope of this line which is nothing but the constant acceleration but we already found this constant acceleration around to minus 1.6 or so it calculated this constant acceleration as 1.59 but you know it's there close to each other but we don't uh, get the acceleration information from here we already done it so uh, what about you know this root mean square deviation this root mean square deviation is just to be taken to be the uh, errors in this uh, you know velocity calculations at each and every frame so 
uh, I will take this value which is the root mass square deviation for this graph and which is in units of meter per second to be uh, my uh, error value in velocity so this is calculated as 1.389 10 to minus 2 or uh, let me write this record this value to my white screen this is what I see in terms of uh, meter per second it is 0 0.0139 meter per second that's it this uh, v0 is just 0 0.1093 and delta v is just 0 0.0 one three eight it's like around the ten percent error or so all right so this is how we calculate delta v the error in uh, velocity the error in the calculated velocity of uh, initial calculated velocity of our model so and this is done what next what next is find the error in the result of calculated uh, acceleration what is delta a this is the calculated acceleration by tracker but uh, we must also know what is the uh, error in this result okay because we are using uh, values which are uh, by themselves uh, have errors so to calculate error in a let's first uh, let me uh, solve a uh, in this equation, okay, in terms of other variables. So, if you solve a over here, you will get uh, 2 divided by t squared x minus x0 uh, minus 2 v0 divided by t, right? And that's it. So, this is an expression for acceleration by using this equation. So, since we have an equation for the acceleration now, if you have an equation for a quantity, then you can calculate the error in that quantity in, in terms of the errors uh, of the variables that gives this quantity over here. So we have over here x, position measurements, time measurements, and a calculated uh, initial velocity, again time over here. So if you know the errors of delta x, delta t, and delta v, then we can calculate uh, delta A, right? Well, uh, the first thing that you have to uh, look at over here is that uh, the acceleration is sum of two expressions, just like let's let's uh, you know rewrite the acceleration as the sum of u uh, minus let's say or plus or minus you know is can be taken as the same footing v, and I just call this term 2 divided by t squared multiplied by x minus x zero as u and 2 e zero divided by t as v so if you have errors in u and v of course you have because you have errors in x and t you can calculate delta a and the formula for this you might uh, remember from uh, error analysis videos that if you if you know delta u and delta v and delta a is going to be delta u squared plus delta v squared in square root okay so the next thing is that we have to calculate what is delta u and what is delta v and what is u u is 2x minus x0 divided by t square and u in terms of delta if you if you you know u in terms of x and t you can calculate delta u in terms of delta x and delta t and again uh, this has a formula if you look at the uh, let me uh, remove this if you look at error, error analysis uh, videos and uh, this is kind of let, let let me give an example if you have an expression like uh, um, w is equal to some other uh, variables p divided by let's say z right if these have errors delta p and delta z what is going to be delta v so this was like delta v delta w sorry delta w is w which is p divided by z 
multiplied by uh, delta p divided by p squared plus delta z divided by z squared and take this squared and this formula is you know i explained this in the error analysis videos you can check uh, but if you have square or a different power in one of these uh, variables if for example if you have square in z then in that case what you do is just modify this by putting two over here and square over here okay if you have cube for example the power is 3 for p and just modify this by p cube and over here come in parentheses just put 3 in front of the ratio so this is how it goes to calculate errors for ratios or for multiplications all right so by just uh, looking at this i can express uh, delta u to be 2x minus x0 divided by t squared multiplied by uh, delta x divided by x squared plus 2 times delta t divided by t squared and take the squared. So what about x minus x0? x minus x0 is just the distance from the starting position of the card in the video to the last frame and uh, this is going to be since the card ends on the uh, uh, very close to uh, origin this can be taken as 1.373 meters uh, and whatever wherever you see x over here you can just put uh, uh, this value instead of x and we know what delta x is delta x is already calculated already found uh, in terms of meters of this value and what is t t is the last uh, time measurement let's check what is it, what this is in our uh, tracker it's the last time come over here change this to x uh, just pick up the last time measurement from table data table it is 1.385 so t okay t is just to be taken as 1.385 seconds okay and what is delta t delta t is there it's already calculated by the half of the uh, frame duration in our uh, at, uh, earlier uh, uh, part in this video okay so all you do is you just uh, put these values and calculate delta u and again uh, let's uh, express also v delta v since v is 2v0 divided by t squared and delta v is going to be 2v0 divided by t squared multiplied by uh, uh, delta v divided by v0 or, or v v is going to be last uh, measured uh, velocity squared plus uh, 2 times delta t divided by t and square it and take the square it, square it so what is v the last value well this v and the velocity is not the same uh, i'm sorry about this this is just a, uh, the velocity of the card at the last uh, frame so you can again check this from x uh, v versus time graph and just check come over here the last uh, uh, data point and this shows the last value for v is just you take just the magnitude of this it says at minus 2.038 but this v over here let's switch uh, you're going to take this one this value let's switch to white screen this v over here is going to be 2. Uh, 0.38 meter per second so that's it and all num all the values are clear now just calculate del calculate delta u and delta v and put on this formula to calculate delta a i know it's a little long but this is how you calculate the error in acceleration okay by the way i just made a mistake over here and uh, this should be v0 
and this value is just not the uh, last velocity value but it is just v0 because we're calculating the error in v0 so it's going to be replaced by one zero point one uh, zero nine three meter per second so okay what i did i just calculated this uh, in my calculator and as, 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 a, as a result i just found I'm just writing the result uh, to be, uh, let me read this, 0 0.0261, etc. So meter per second square. So that's it, guys. And the result of the acceleration information is that it is minus 1.600, uh, sorry, 6056 plus minus 0 point after the decimal point there are uh, four digits 0 0.0261 okay so from this we can calculate the percentage error etc uh, let's do this also okay and the percent error can be just calculated uh, from delta a divided by a multiplied by 100 and I just calculated this to be 1.6 to 6% so 1.6% is quite good okay uh, usually in our real lab experiments we find uh, errors up to like 5% uh, or so so in this uh, video experiment 1.6% uh, is our error so that's it guys uh, uh, this is how we uh, employ the model breaking method uh, for a constant accelerated model of in an inclined table and how we calculate the uh, parameters and etc how we use tracker for this and uh, at 10 how we calculate the error values in our results